Welcome to my Farm 24 video. I am taking part in hashtag Farm 24, uh, which is organised and run by the uh, Farmers Guardian over in the UK. I myself am from Ireland. I'm in the northwest of Ireland in the Republic. Any kind of campaign that promotes uh, the agricultural industry, I am all for and I am definitely going to give my full support. Um, these are four horn joe lambs that um, we brought off the mountain the other day. They're a bit smaller that we probably won't be keeping ourselves for breeding. We're keeping the bigger and stronger lambs the best um, for breeding in the future. Just because we constantly want to improve our flock. We've got their feet done. There was two that were lame, probably why they're a bit smaller, I guess. And um, just not thriving and growing as much because of the lameness. So I've treated them. Uh, you can actually see the foot spray on my hand. <laughs> Um, and actually one of them is my pet lamb. This is Blackie. Blackie never drank any milk. She got stuck in a hole at a month old. She was still with her mum then. The mother didn't want her anymore. She had forgotten that she existed, I guess, um, for the period that she was stuck in the hole. Um, so yeah, poor little Blackie was left with me, but Blackie would never drink from a bottle. She never wanted to uh, learn how to drink from a bottle, and it sometimes happens, but Thankfully, she was old enough to be able to manage by herself. She got creep for about, what age you know? You must be, probably about two months she was on the creep feeder. So we're going to put these four lambs down in the field with another few yo lambs. Um, we still have to pull off what we're keeping and what we're not keeping, but we're just taking these away from the rest of the mountain flock. So girls, off you come. Come on. And look at that. I already managed to get distracted from the main purpose of this video and we're not even two minutes in. Nice one, Joanne. Um, so you guys have seen the title, you've seen the thumbnail. You know the main purpose is for Farm 24, which is a great campaign, but um, my main theme of this video is to take you guys along on my um, personal best tally that I did two days ago. I showed 351 sheep in eight hours and the sheep weren't crutched, so there was all the wool, natural wool, was still around the tail. Or the entire belly was still there. The sheep were untouched. I showed them in their normal, natural state. There wasn't a hand laid on them since they went to the hill about two months ago. <laughs> and some of them there longer than that. <laughs> um, so, you know, I wanted it to be real and, you know, for it to be a personal best. And then I'd know for in the future... I'd be capable of doing more if um, I ever wanted to go ahead and try um, maybe a women's record or an Irish record in the future. Um, they'd obviously be on crutch sheep, so I had an idea um, how much better I would do if I was on crutch sheep and maybe a different breed. Um, but this was just a personal day tally. I wanted to do the best that I could and I had the whole family behind me, lots of support. They were going to help me throughout the entire day for the last time. Um, I got a message or two on Instagram from people uh, claiming that I shore off the bellies beforehand or had the sheep crutched. I did not. The sheep were completely untouched. I wanted this to be real. I wanted it to be a real day at Ali. So, let's take you guys along. Hope you guys enjoy as much as I did. <laughs> So the forecast, the most important thing really, um, it was forecasted to be wet on the day that I was supposed to be shearing, but it was a great day the day beforehand. So what we did was we housed the sheep, um, half of them in our own shed and half of them in our good neighbour John's shed. Um, it's also good to fast the sheep for a few hours before shearing. Um, if you can imagine like eating your Christmas dinner and then going for a run, it is really uncomfortable. You'd rather go for a run um, on a near empty stomach, you know what I mean? 
So um, the idea is to make it easier on the sheep that they're not uncomfortable. If we ever try and shear um, a sheep with a full belly, so say a farmer just runs them straight in off the field, full bellies of grass, it is so obvious. Their bellies are big, blown up, full of grass, and they just find the experience a lot more uncomfortable. So the idea is to make the sheep comfortable, and then that way they'll sit quieter for me. It'll be easier for me, it'll be easier on them. Everybody wins. So this is the way that an eight hour day is scheduled. Um, we're not starting until 8 a.m. Just because it means that we'll finish at 6 p.m. which is early enough for us. So I'll just show you guys exactly how the day is scheduled out. So it's eight hours shearing in total, which means it's all divided into two hour segments of shearing. Starting at 8 a.m., we do two hours shearing, 10 a.m., a half hour break, two hours shearing at 10.30, one hour break at 12.30, at um, 1.30 p.m., two hours shearing, 3.30 p.m., half hour break, so it's half hour break, hour break, half hour break. And then finally 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. is two hours shearing. So a total of eight, eight hours shearing and a total of two hour breaks. So it's a 10 hour day altogether from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. But eight hour shearing. So it's an eight hour record. I'm calling it a record, but it's not really. It's just kind of a habit from um, how record days are planned out. Um, but... It's a personal best, so it's going to be my first 300, hopefully, fingers crossed, I get it. We have 300 sheep lined up, ready to go for tomorrow, all indoors, as tomorrow it's raining. So everything is housed, ready to go. Um, Yeah, it's just going to be a PB, a personal best, um, and it's on our own sheep, which I definitely uh, prefer. You know, it's nice to be able to do it on your own sheep, you can go at your own pace. Dad is happy to... um follow a schedule and it'll be easier to try and do it within the set hours um, once it's your own sheep because dad is much more flexible than say if it was a farmer that needed their sheep done um, you know quickly then we'd get two or three shears but this is 300 sheep done by one shear which is yours truly <laughs> so I can do this I'm obviously not posting this till I've actually done it so if you're watching this I've done it. If you're, you know, I'll probably post it anyway if I don't do it because, you know, either way, I'm going to share 300 sheep tomorrow unless I break a leg. Touch wood, that does not happen. Yeah. Okay. I'm definitely going to be cutting that out if it actually does happen, okay? <laughs> here we go. Oh, guys, just getting into bed here. Um, I have everything ready. My shearing blades are sharpened. Um, I have my combs buffed and polished. Um, yeah, uh, sheep are all indoors, so it is supposed to be wet tomorrow, but that won't affect us because we're shearing indoors and all the sheep are housed for the night. Uh, yeah, so uh, I'm getting up at half six and shearing for eight, so that should give me plenty of time to uh, get organised and ready to go. Um, we've got a great team of help. The whole entire family is going to be helping out throughout the day. Um, so yeah, a mixture of nerves and excitement, uh, which may keep me from getting to sleep as early as I'd like. But hopefully I get to sleep fairly soon. I am tired enough. So yeah, I'll chat to you tomorrow, guys. <laughs> You put any soup here. Okay, ready? News. Good morning, it's 8 o'clock. I'm Rob Clark. It's, it's about 8 o'clock, yes. Five. I know. Fifty. Five. Five. Four. four three. Two. One. Go. <laughs> Let's go. Thank you.
The plan was to do my personal bets on horned yo lambs and horned yos. So um they were all um for breeding in the future. Um we also had our ram lambs which we shear every year for keeping. We usually put them to aftergrass and let them lie on for another while. Add them if I spilled over the 300 that um I'd be able to share them too. We weren't expecting me to do much more than 300 so we were like you know a few ram lambs at the end will be no harm. She'll be alright. She'll have reached her goal at that stage anyway. That's what I thought. <laughs> Some people from my Instagram might remember um, 10 swale little hoggets that we bought during the winter. They are lovely little sheep, delightful to look at. A nice change of scenery on the mountain. Uh, the only thing is that they are very woolly. They have very long woolly tails. <laughs> It's 9.05 and we have 50 sheep done. Get the stuff done. With any bunch of sheep, you'll have a variation between them. You'll have the ones that are lovely, they comb nicely, they're lovely shearing. And then you'll have a few that are matty, cotted, and um, sometimes sticky. 
So you just have to deal with that and your ability to be able to adjust and deal with that variation is what will make or break you on the day of a big tally or a record. first two hours I managed to get 88 sheep done averaging about 44 an hour and 11 on the quarter so every 15 minutes. So that was the end of my first of four two hour runs and um, so into my second run with the same determination. few moments later one eternity later Steering is a very essential part of sheep husbandry and welfare. Um, they can get maggots um, in the summertime if they're not shorn. Where with these sheep, they're on the top of the mountain, so they're a lot less likely to get maggots, at least until this time of year anyway, so that's why they're not shorn yet. Also, mountain sheep, especially this blackface breed, we have mostly male blackface, they aren't ready for shearing until this time of year. Uh, July or August, you definitely wouldn't attempt them before then. I mean by not ready for shearing, um, basically the wool hasn't risen yet. There is no second growth and you need that second growth to get in under the fleece. Um, if you tried to shear them back in May or June, it would be near impossible. They're very sticky. The, the fleece is still very close to their skin. And also they're only after lambing, so... You know, the yos haven't started thriving fully. The lamb is drawing a lot out of them by drinking a lot every single day. Whereas this time of year, the lambs are a lot older. Their diet is a lot more grass-based and they are relying a lot less on their mother's milk. So the yo has uh, more of an opportunity to look after herself. And that's when she really starts to put on weight and starts thriving. Um, Still really important to shear these sheep. Um, Sometimes on the mountain, you'll often find if a yo gets away from shearing, 
for a year and um, not so much on our mountain but we do gather for some people and um, through forestry and that and they have really big mountain runs if he all misses the shearing for a year you can tell like she's got this massive big cotton fleece you'd wonder how she gets on like how she survives for an entire year and um, there'd be wire hanging out of them bushes hanging out of them like a sheep are domesticated at this stage and they have been bred for thousands and thousands of years to produce wool and constantly grow it kind of like um your wool dog breeds like um a poodle and a bichon they just constantly grow and they have to keep getting trimmed and keep getting it cut back once a year for sheep anyway the dog i think is like every three months isn't it or maybe more is it eight weeks like i don't have one collies are the best they shed <laughs> obviously mountain sheep so they're basically stone mad <laughs> they are wild they're hard gathered and um, you definitely need a good team of people and a good team of dogs but also to hold them and um, it's really important you have good footwork and um, you keep your toes turned in your legs wrapped around them keep them comfortable and still and um, keep them relaxed and you'll be able to shear them but still they're wild mountain sheep some of them gave me a bit of bother which is obviously going to happen when you're shearing a wild animal. The second two hour run was my um, most efficient run. I done 90 sheep so um was 11 sheep for the quarter except for two quarters I got 12 sheep and um, I think I got um, the first 12 after the comb change so on the hour and then um, I got my second 12 uh, the last um, quarter so um, Basically, what you can do is you get the catch. So once you have your hand on the door to get another sheep, before the time ends, you're allowed to shear that last sheep over the end of the uh, two-hour run. So that's kind of the world record rules and the normal ordinary record rules. And um, so that's what I was using for my tally. So I got that second um, twelve on the quarter in my catch at the end of the second run which left me with 90 sheep for two hours so that was definitely my most uh, best run uh, probably I was kind of fresh then and um, I definitely got more tired as the day went on goal is when they start kicking like that just keep them as still as possible try not let them get up let them kind of just calm down again and then proceed i often find just to kind of give them that second and just let them relax again and then they kind of just get back into it Next up, run number three. Three. People start to get tired at this run. Um, it's when your body starts feeling a little bit more uh, tired out, for sure. Um, I wasn't too bad the third run. The fourth run definitely knocked a lot out of me. But for the third run, I did certainly feel the effects. Um, the I, f I felt like time was moving so slowly. And like it was just so drawn out and I was like, this is never going to end.
I got a really good shot of um, the sheep coming in the paddock. Start talking, it sounds very quiet. <laughs> Ah, uh, the fourth run, last but not least, <laughs> the final stretch. Um, really hard. You're absolutely exhausted. You still want to maintain that speed and give it your all, and you're like, come on, push for the last. But you're just so tired. Um, halfway through the day, I was well on track for three hundred. So we set a new goal for three hundred and fifty sheep. Um, before going into the last run, I knew that I had about 45 minutes left on the Horn Joes and Horn Joe Lambs. Um, and I knew that the rest of the run would be on the Horned Ram Lambs just to make up the 350. Um, I was not prepared to be doing as many Horned Ram Lambs. Not that there was much I could to, to prepare, only <laughs> brace myself. Um, them guys were tough. They were hard. They're really strong, um, lively. They've done so well on the mountain, which is great to see, but they really did give me a tough time and when I was absolutely exhausted. And it took Carl, my brother, constantly telling me to keep pushing forward and keep seeing it through till the end. And also a lot of friends and family came to cheer me on for the last run as well, which made the world a difference, totally. Not only are ram lambs very strong, but um, when you're shearing the belly, you also have to avoid the pizzle. So um, I don't think I needn't, I needn't tell you what that is, do I? The male excretory organ. Yes. Um, they have <laughs> that in the centre of their belly. So you have to be careful to avoid that. Obviously, you couldn't, you couldn't <laughs> go near that with the shears. God forbid. So you have to be very careful to avoid that. It's very important for the poor little lads. Um, so that takes an extra few seconds um, off the belly, which all of it costs time, you know. So um, that was definitely an obstacle I had to overcome. might be able to see there we have a yo um with her head in the front of the race that is basically for anyone who isn't familiar with how sheep work and um, basically they follow each other everywhere so the idea is that that yo in the front the yo's behind can see her they just follow in a line straight up the race and it makes loading up onto the race a lot less stressful for them we obviously changed over the sheep in the front we didn't leave her there all day we changed her over and made sure there wasn't any sheep waiting in there for too long. Uh, but she just basically encourages the sheep to move on up the race. They practically load into the race themselves.
Here come the Ram Lambs, an hour and 15 to go, and the Ram Lambs begin. They killed me. Can you see I'm deceased? <laughs> <laughs> so what you're about to see is a cutter change there's two types of blades when you're shearing and um, what I was changing there was a cutter uh, I used I changed this every 30 minutes and um, so four for every two hour run and then I changed my combs every hour so two for every two hour run I'll be honest, at this point, um, probably about a half hour to go, I was knackered. I was so mentally exhausted, physically exhausted, and these ram lambs were like not having any mercy on me. It was tough. It was really hard. And there was no way I would have kept doing it without Carl constantly telling me, keep going, you can do this, you have so many sheep to do in this amount of time, it's possible, do it, you know, and I nearly wanted to slap him at times, but it's what I needed to get over that line, so I'm very thankful I had him there on the day to coach me through it.
you'll see in the next clip, uh, I got 88 for the first run, 90 for the second run, 89 for the third run. And now as on my final run, I knew I'd drop a little bit, but I needed 83 in order to get 350. So with the Ram Lambs, I just had to keep pushing and keep moving forward. <laughs> Five minutes left. Go on, John. Go on, John. Go on, John. Five minutes left, John. One more sheep, John. Go on. I do not cry that often. I am not a crier, but. I will admit I was well enough when they started chanting. <laughs> Just, you know, uh, the tiredness, like I was suffering, but still like everyone encouraged me and cheering me on. It was really special. The longest five minutes of my entire life for sure maybe they were lying to me maybe it was like still 15 minutes left <laughs> oi So what is kind of standard in the shearing community when we do a new personal best we usually get a spray can and spray the side of the sheep with our new tally uh, particularly when we get over a hundred mark like so um 100 200 and this was my first 300 so i sprayed the side of the sheep 351 sheep <laughs> Oh, it is class. Like when it's sunny, like yesterday was a lovely day. Yeah.
so that concludes my hashtag farm24 video i hope you guys enjoyed make sure for the rest of the day you uh, upload plenty of photos and stories um of your farming life or even if you're not a farmer if you have anything to say about the agricultural industry go ahead we need um to promote this industry and the hard working people and that are behind feeding the country so thanks for watching guys and i'll chat to you again next time bye